In our first advanced defence video, we briefly mentioned the different types of defensive shots and how each of these affect your racket, court and foot positioning. However, as you progress your game further, there's much more than just a simple block, drive and lift. So in today's video, we're going to take you through each of these different varieties and also the tactics of when you use them. So let's get to it. Right, we all know what a block is, and if you don't, go back and watch our Fundamentals Defence video, which we'll put up here for you. But now we're going to cover two different types of blocks, the first one being a soft block. This is a shot you would use when you see a bit of space at the front of the court. It might be that the net player is further back, looking for the interception, like this. This might be because you've done some drives in defence in previous rallies, so they're anticipating this shot. The soft block would therefore be a good shot to play to make your opponents take the shuttle below net height and maybe play a weak net shot or even a lift, therefore turning defence into attack in just one shot. You should, however, not play a soft block if your opponent was in a good position at the net, as this would be the likely result. This is, of course, unless you take the shuttle earlier and hit a good quality shot with width. But this soft block is really hard to do off a powerful smash, so instead you might use a fade. And this is the second type of block we'd use. For this shot, it's still soft and controlled, but this time you want it to land just past the service line. It's a great shot if your opponent's really close to the net, because then they have to make the decision whether it's theirs to take or their partner's behind them. The fade is also less risky than the soft block to the net, as you're not going for those tight margins. It's probably less likely to result in a lift but might pull your opponents out of position for you to capitalise on the next shot. As with the soft block, you would try and play the shot to the sides of the court, away from your opponent at the net. There's only really one main type of drive, and how effective this will be will depend on your position in defence. So, if you're facing a really powerful smash, then you may only be able to play a reactive drive upwards. However, if you play this with good placement and a short swing, then it might encourage your opponents to attack it, and then with the short swing, you're then ready to counter on the next shot. Oh, um, what a rally. Oh. Of course, with most new shots and techniques, you want to put them into practice before you play a match. And even if you're a visual learner, it's still good to grasp the concept by practicing at first. So you can practice this situation by using this routine. As you can see, the feeder smashes down. You drive back up at their partner and then quickly turn it away. If you don't have three people, you can emulate the smash like we're showing here and then hit the next shuttle cross. This is a routine we do a lot in training. It really helps us to work on the technical defence and everything we've mentioned in our previous defence videos, such as having a relaxed grip and racket out in front of you. And we'll talk about how you can play a cross-court defence, both with power and control, in future videos, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. So moving on to the lifts. There are three different varieties of lifts, all with potential different outcomes. Firstly, we have high open lifts, and the purpose of these lifts is to try and work your opponents from corner to corner, constantly making them move, but actually giving them time. And this is because the accuracy and length of your lifts will force them to continually play building shots. And because they can only play building shots, the net player will then try and rotate out to help the rear court player, exposing a gap in the front court. This style is commonly used in women's doubles and is also very much suited for slower shuttles where your big lifts aren't in danger of landing out all the time and you can defend a bit more easily. Your high lifts mean that you can set yourself ready in defence for you to spot the potential gaps on the other side of the court. And finally, high lifts make it harder to hit powerful shots. This is because the shuttle's coming down like this, meaning that you're hitting the side of the shuttle rather than the court coming onto the strings, making it easier to time and create power. Next, you have your regular height lifts. These have enough height to get over the net player, but not enough height for the rear court player to get comfortably behind the shuttle. It's your most common lift for a normal speed shuttle, and it's important when using these lifts to focus on accuracy and not just lifting to the same place multiple times to make it easy for your opponent. You want to try and get your opponent stretching and off balance to force a mistake or turn this defense into attack. 
And you can also use flat lifts for this purpose. And this is our final style of lifting. The idea behind this is that it reduces the amount of time your opponents have to get to the shuttle, hopefully forcing a mistake or then playing a shot you can take advantage of. Generally, this style is played with faster shuttles and this is for two reasons. Firstly, your opponents are less likely to be able to play steep angled shots from your flat lifts, meaning that their smashes are more likely to go out of the back of the court. And the second reason to flat lift is that it's easiest to control, so you might not hit as many lifts out of the back of the court. However, do be careful of lifting too flat so that it's easy for the net player to intercept it. And as we're showing now, I've definitely been a victim of this before. So for all of these shots that we've covered today, it's best to practice these in a 2v1 or 2v2 scenario so you can really understand the quality of your shot. If you're just practicing in a 1v1, then it's really hard to judge whether your shot quality will actually put your opponents under any pressure. We're going to cover how to go from defense into attack in your partnership more in a future video, as well as how to hit effective cross-court defensive shots. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on those. That's it for today's video. If you want to watch another video, check out one of these we're about to show now.